Round then beat Anastasia Shapanyuk of Ukraine by unanimous decision in her semi-final. She looked good when I saw her fight yesterday. But this should be a good fight for Gaston Kuta in her fight against Kazmarska. Didn't have a great opening round and then managed to figure a few things out in rounds one and two. Made good adjustments. And she's got some good courage about her too. She does tend to lean heavily onto her front foot a bit. The Lithuanian and maybe Shamanova, who we're looking at entering the ring there, might be able to take advantage of that because she is a cute fighter, a clever fighter. Stonkuta representing Lithuania, the only Lithuanian fighter to get to a a final. I enjoyed watching her in the semi-finals a couple of days ago. As I said, she does lean heavily on that front foot. She has got some height and reach to her, but she does tend to lean in and kind of take her own distance away a little bit. And I just wonder about that against someone like Shamanova, but she's certainly got plenty of of grit, Stonkuta. That much she did show us as well. Making sure those head guards are in place. You do see some problems with them sometimes. The chin strap will come a bit loose and start riding up, or particularly with the females, the longer hair will come flying out of the back, and you don't want to see a bout disturbed and somebody may be given a rest when they really want one and somebody else doesn't. I can find it. Look at the hands on the coach, and he's got to try and deal with intri intricate braids and a bandana and a do rag <laughs> underneath the head guard. It's a skill that coaches need to have because in women's Olympic style boxing, the head guard is a feature. And as you say, you don't want it coming undone at an opportune time. So maybe, as well as the coaching skills, going to have to get intricate with those hands and the headdresses and hairstyles as well. So here we go. This is the final with the women's middleweight division. Shamanova, Russia, number one seed in the red. Stone Kuta, Lithuania, who knocked out the number two seed earlier in the competition in the blue. Shamanova just light on those feet, in and out with the feet. Stone Kuta just looking to try and shuffle in herself. Looked to throw the jab. Almost reached with it a few moments ago. As I said, physically they are pretty similar. Shamanova looking for a, a left to the body there. A bit of discoloration around the left eye of Stone Kuta, but nothing too major. And just caught by that one two. And now that's what I was afraid of for Stone Kuta because as I said, she's got that weight pretty heavily on that front foot and tends to lean in with the head a bit. And Shamanova's a good fighter. If she gets her distance and rattles off that one two. She can pick her off from the outside, even though, reach-wise, they are about the same. Because, as I said, Stonkuta takes a bit of her own reach away by the way she leans in. Throwing that left hand, whipping it up from the waist, moving off to the left. Shamanova finishing on the left hook. Stonkuta will keep coming forward. She took some good shots in her semi-final against Kashmarska which would have been the result of some of that bruising around that left eye. Shamanova gets through with a decent one-two again there. Midway through round one, referee telling Stonkuta to keep her, her head up. Shamanova looking for that jab, throws the right hand, puts a left hook on the back of it. She favours that right hand, Shamanova. She does use the jab, but it's more to set up that right hand. You saw there, she just tried to shovel that right hand underneath, a kind of screw shot, uppercut. That was better from Stone Kuta, who got into range there, pushed Shaman over onto the back foot, then let her own hands go. And she's taken the centre of the ring for the most part, but Shaman over's happy with that. She knows that Stone Kuta will come forward, that that's the way that, that she boxes. She doesn't really have a reverse gear. And she's fancying her chances here of just walking her onto not quite whatever she likes, but she pinned her with a nice solid one two again there as we head up towards the conclusion of of round one 
Ston Kutra, if she's going to win this fight, she's really going to have to do it the hard way. Just keep putting this kind of pressure on, keep eating these shots up and see if Shamanova fades and she can get to it in the later stages of the fight. Ideally in round two, she'll all of a sudden start moving ahead much more, but that's not going to happen. You can see that in that regard, she's, she's quite kind of upset in her ways in, in, in terms of the, the style she boxes in. Good one-two again there from Shamanova and referee having a quick word there with her about pulling down on the back of the opponent's head. And there goes the, the hooter for the end of, of round one. And Shamanova doing to Stonkuta what I kind of feared she might Stonkuta without wishing to be too mean, fights with her face too much. Well, it was a very good opening round by Shamanova. Picked her shots very well indeed to both body and head. Timed her opponent to good effect. And there you can see, as we see the reverse 1-2 on the, on the replay, 10-9 across the board. All five scoring judges favoring the work of the woman in red who was able to score in clusters and often without reply, getting in and out before Stonkuta could find a home for her own punches. Very good ring craft indeed from Anastasia Shamanova. And she'll be looking to do more of the same. Ston Kutra has got to try and do something different or continue to apply pressure that wears the woman in red out. Very difficult, though, to win using that type of tactic in a contest over three threes unless the pressure is going to be so high. But Shimonov are doing a good job negating the effectiveness of the woman in blue. OK, so it's the second round. Ston Kutra in the blue. Shimonov of, of Russia in the, in the red. Stonkuta just getting through with a little uppercut on the inside there early on. She needs some encouragement. Climbs onto the inside. Let's go with a with a left hand. Throws that left hand again, but a right hand lands there from the Russian in the red. As I said, there's nothing wrong with the with the heart of, of Stonkuta. She will keep coming forward. She will keep taking punches. But longevity-wise, although she's reached a high level here, obviously, this is a European under-22 final. If she's to make it to the kind of next level, if you like, She's got to start moving that head more. Good left hand there from Stonkuta, though. Shamanova really set her feet for that one, though, and just ram the uppercut in. Trying to move that head there, Stonkuta. Gets into good distance there and lets her hands go. That was where she needed to be. Just a little bit of head movement on the way in, and you see what that can do. Little half step off to the right, found an angle, and rattled in two, three punch combination. And she's doing better in this second round, Stonkuta. A minute into it. Shamanova, her punch output has just gone down a bit, I would say. Stonkuta keeps coming forward. There's that jab from Shamanova, looking to throw that uppercut off the back foot. Midway through the round. And she's still landing here, the Russian, she's still landing plenty. But the Lithuanian is having a better second round. She's unbelievably tough. And sooner or later, when you've got someone rolling towards you like this constantly, and no matter what you throw at them and hit them with, it doesn't seem to make a dent, you are going to start feeling that pace, feeling that pressure. And I think maybe the Russian is just a little bit. She's still winning the round, but she's being made to work very, very hard. Good left hand, nice right hand to the pit of the stomach there from Shamanova, and then followed by a left. Just heaves a big breath in there. The Russian number one seed. Not too many number one seeds have made it through to finals across the men's and the women's. I think three in the women's and, and maybe four in the men's. Thirty seconds remaining in round two. Just hooking off the back foot there, Chamanova. Then distracting with the lead hander, looking for the right to the body. Stone Kuta again just pursues her but just doesn't quite have the cuteness there to trap her back on the ropes and Shamanova was able just to skirt away to her left into the final 10 seconds of, of round two. Left hand there from Stone Kuta followed by a right from Shamanova who takes a walk back to the corner making sure she gets plenty of air in and we wondered what Ston Kuta would do, I think we knew what she would do, which would just be to keep doing the same thing. And she did have more success. I don't think she won the round. She had more success. And Shamanova made to work hard. You can see that. 
has indeed been made to work harder, but she's conceded the second round for all five scoring judges, one of them making it a 10-8 round, which is perhaps harsh on Gabrielle Stonkuta. But again, superior skills, more accurate punch picking, and greater volume of scoring shots landed by the woman in red, Shimonova. Has got to remain switched on here and can pretty much nurse this one over the line because Stonkuta she'll be looking to come on strong here because in reality she needs to get her opponent out of there. I don't think she's going to be dominant enough without scoring knockdowns and inside the distance potential stoppages to get a 10-8 round on boxing skill alone. It's going to have to be brute force brought into play. It is, it is. She's she's going to have to take her out and we've not seen that very often in this in this tournament so far over the course of the last eight days. Shamanova just stepping in there with, with a good solid one-two again. She entered this as the number one seed. She's going to live up to that billing. I, I mentioned her much storied, decorated career as a junior and a youth. And she is a good fighter, you can see that. Has been for a very, very long time. Stone Kuta, just a little bit too one-dimensional for somebody of this quality. To try and move that head again there, Stone Kuta, and, and that is what she, she needs to do. A bit more head movement, a bit more lateral movement. Maybe just get that weight back in the middle of her feet a, a little bit more but it's not like this method hasn't reaped rewards for her in her boxing career up until this point it has but as i said previously to make it to that next level adjustments i think do need to be made she swallowed up a big uppercut there from shamanova there's nothing wrong with her chin ston Kuta. that much we do know she's proved that on numerous occasions the goal going forward from here would be to try and have to prove it a bit less. So heading into the final minute, this is the women's middleweight final, 75 kilos. Shaman over again, just looking to go down to the body, jab to the head, went down to the body, tried to switch the body shot into an uppercut. She's got good variety, chopping down on that right hand nicely there, turned that over really, really well, just grazed the chin of Ston Kuta, who still comes forward, the fighter in blue, just keeping those feet, just moving, little shuffles. Good uppercut there from Ston Kuta. Right hand there from Shamanova, just trying to sling that one in around the back of the guard, and again there. Well, she's going to be confident that she'll get the gold medal. She'll know that she's got the gold medal when the when the bell goes here, Shamanova. But I think she'll be quite glad that this finally brings to an end of nine minutes of her opponent constantly walking her down. A touch of gloves between the two. Ston Kuta knows which way the wind is blowing here. So does Shamanova. And it's always impressive when you see a number one seed come into a competition, justify that billing and win, because that's what she's done. And she's won this final comfortably. And as we've been saying during the course of the afternoon, it's been a bit of a graveyard for the seeds this so far. Yeah, there is a certain added pressure that comes with that. Have a target on your back. Everybody's looking to take you out. Come in with that reputation that often precedes so to wear that mantle and wear it lightly, as Shimonova has done during the course of this tournament, is another impressive dimension to her burgeoning skill set. Very impressive indeed. So red corner gets it, and by wide margin, so three rounds to nil with all of the judges, and a 30-26 with our Spanish judge, thanks to a 10-8 in round two. And there was just a golf in boxing ability between those two. There was no golf between them in terms of courage, character and conditioning. You know, Stonkuta held up on all of those counts, but 
Shamanova was just quite simply a better boxer than Storm Cooter and it showed over the course of those of those nine minutes. So she takes a, a gold medal for Russia.